Daniel chapter 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and this can be dated, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And this is what we're talking about from Jeremiah and from Daniel, I mean Ezekiel. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part, part. Now remember, Nebuchadnezzar comes into Jerusalem three times. With part of the vessels of the, of the house of God. The third time, Nebuchadnezzar comes and takes it all. And we are even given a list. Everything but the ark. With part, not all, that comes later, of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, Zechariah 5.5, 5, which is Babylon, to the house of his God. Well, look what happened here. The stuff of God became a God's property. And that's what the churches are today. You have taken something that was once for God and it's given over to all kinds of gods. Bunnies, trees, programs, magic, anything. It's still God's, but it's in a house not recognized by God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his gods. It's a trophy. Look what we got. Look what I got. Because the sins of Judah. Because the sins of Jerusalem that we read about in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. God's stuff ends up in the house of God. The ark had already shown up one time in the house of Dagon. Because the sins of the people. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs. So there's a people of eunuchs under the king. And under the eunuchs, they sat under this man, Ashpenaz. That he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed. All right. This was 2 Kings 20, 18, Isaiah 39, 7. It was foretold. What you have is you have Jewish, Jewish people. And not only do you have Jewish people, you have Jewish king's seed, their children. And of the princes, you got royalty. That's under, would be of the seed of David. For royalty. Children in whom was no blemish, no freckles, no handicaps, but well-flavored, well-liked, well-pleased, and skillful in all wisdom. So they were wise, as the nature of Solomon. And cunning, and that, today, word cunning means, you know, it's crafty, but cunning in the Bible means skilled laborer skilled in doing something you would say pro in knowledge all right so they're wise and skilled there's now they're pros at knowledge and understanding science now there's nothing wrong with science if it's within god's will if it agrees with what god has to say Science in the Bible can can be together, can coexist if it's by God. Science would be that God created everything and that there are signs, seasons. Ability to plant, to grow, animal tree. And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Not everybody was in the king's palace. I would assume that some of the king's family would not be allowed because of defect, because of crime, because of who they were, because of maybe a bad reputation. Not all were allowed to go into the palace. And of whom they might teach the learning and the tongue, the language of the Chaldean. So what they're going to do is they're going to take these Hebrews and they're going to 
train them over from Jewish Street, that's a word, I make up new words all the time, to Babylonian, Chaldean. We don't want them to know their Jewish roots anymore. And the king appointed them a daily provision, a certain amount, of the king's meat, the king's dining room, the king's kitchen, and of wine, which he drank. So nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Now there are three years. What we're going to do in chapter one is going to be three years long. Almost like a college term. Just minus a year. Now among these were the children of Judah. See? Judah. Probably more so of David. But they had not crossed seeds. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs. Guys in charge of the eunuchs. Gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belshazzar. And that is a. Uh, that's a. Babylonian God. It means the king's leader or the attendant. To Hananiah. Shadrach. And to Mashiach. Meshach. Mesh Meshach. And to Azariah of Abednego, and I'm having a hard time with this cold and trying to read, and so if you just forgive me, my nose is all plugged up. So what is Satan trying to do here? He's trying to wipe them out. Germany renamed the Jews. It gave them a name change. What we're trying to do is now we're trying to take away your identity. We don't want you to know who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, then we can't have a Matthew 1, and we can't have a Luke 3, and you can't be of the king's seed for the Lord Jesus Christ to follow his root. So we're going to give you Babylonian names. Have you looked at what names of children are today? present they're not named George Fred Sally common they got these weird names where are these weird names coming from so the first thing we're going to do as Babylonians we're going to change your name and then we're going to change your diet we're going to give you Babylonian food now, I guarantee Babylonian food did not match the dietary laws of the Jewish people. I guarantee there was pork to be found in Babylon. We're going to change your diet. Now, let's give an example, shall we? Let's mention some public school system, maybe somewhere. You want to pick one. And what we're going to do is... We're going to secretly indoctrinate the children that on Friday they're to have fish sticks for dinner or lunch. Now, there's a certain religion out there that you can't eat meat on Friday. You have to have fish. But it's funny because fish is meat. So when you teach a child in a public school system, this is meat, but on this day, you can't eat meat, so we're going to give you meat to eat following a doctrine of a cult, of a religion that changes the names of their high popes. Pope Innocent, Pope Paul, Pope whatever name. Those are name changes to fool the world. What we're going to do is we're going to give you foreign names of gods. 
We're going to teach you the ways of God. Again, let's mention a public school system somewhere. And what we're going to do is we're not going to teach you math. We're not going to teach you English. We're not going to teach you physical education. We're going to teach you how to manipulate your body so you can feel good. We're going to make you stretch yourself in a form of yoga. And we're not going to tell you that's an oriental religion. As you sit on your mat and you practice prayer to Allah in a public school system. And we're going to drive you away from the God of this country, of the foundation, by changing who the founders of the pilgrims. We're going to give you a whole new identity of what your identity is, who you are not. And that is what Babylon is doing to the Jewish people or trying to do. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested a polite, respected of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now he's under the law. And he pulls this man, Ashpenaz, off to the side and says, excuse me, sir, I'm a Hebrew. We have dietary laws. I am not supposed to eat this stuff. Respectfully, please, understand my condition. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king. King has all kind of power. You make the king angry, he can throw you in the jail. You make him angry, he can chop off your neck. Who has pointed your meat and your drink. That's the guy. Who, listen, Daniel, it's not me giving you this food. Understand this. The one that's giving you your food is the king, and I fear him. Now, I fear today with Christians, I don't like this. I don't like the gun control. They would walk up to the President of the United States and give him a whole bunch of lip and defile the Bible where Daniel says, hey, I can't do this, but please, sir, understand me. And he's listening to this guy and what his understanding is. And we're going to find out it happens to Daniel's favor. He said, I fear who appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your face, or faces, worse? Liking then the children which are of your sort. All right, there's a whole bunch of people, Daniel's sex and age. Male, around Daniel's age. He says, if I do this for you, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, well, in the end, you guys are going to look sickly. You're not going to be as healthy. And when that king sees you at the end of three years, <coughs> my life is in danger. These children are put to his charge. And anything on un unhealthiness because of diet, Ashpenaz is worried about capital punishment, if not prison. And what Ashpenaz fears is completely well. These are people put in his charge. Then shall ye make me endanger my head, hanging or behead to the king. And Daniel listened, he said, then said Daniel to Melsar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Meshiel, and Azariah. So here's a guy who's, who's under Ashpenaz. Daniel's speaking to him. Daniel is following 
the chain of command. He doesn't walk right up to the king and say, no, he, who's in charge of Daniel? This guy, Melzar, who's in charge of him? Ashpenaz, who's in charge under him? The king. Daniel is following the rules, he's following order, and he's going to be approved by God. He says to him, whom the prince of the units had put over Daniel, and I, Meshiel, and Azariah, prove thy servants. All right, let's put it to a test. I beseech thee ten days. Not bad, ten days out of three years. A week, more. And let them give us poles. Genesis 25, 39. That's beans. Give us a vegetarian diet. And water to drink. You mean Daniel could, a, a child of God, could have had opportunity to drink wine? He says, you know what? Give me water. How about that, you, you, you drunken, floozy Christian? Didn't Jesus change water into wine? Yeah, but Daniel had a chance to drink wine. And he said, I'd rather have the water. You don't point that out, do you? When you want to find drunkenness in the Bible to your favor. Then, let our countenances, that's your facial expression. You know, there's some people, the other day, we're sick in this house. My wife took one look at me. She goes, you're sick. You can look at someone's face and say, hey, they're happy. Yeah, look at someone's face. They're having a bad day. Something's bothering them. Be looked upon before thee. Now he's already said, listen, he says, in verse 10, should see your face as worse. I'm going to look at your face, and you know what? You don't look healthy. You don't look well. So Daniel says, these 10 days, try us. Then look at our faces. He uses the very thing the guy's afraid of. So Daniel heard what he said. That eat the portion of the king's meat. As thou seest, deal with thy servants. So feed these people what you're supposed to feed them. Feed us beans and water. And at the end of ten days, try us out. Put us together. Look at our faces. So he consented to them in this manner and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. They were healthier. Something was wrong with the Babylonian diet. Or it was a miracle by God. Daniel's praying and God answers the prayer to by these 10 days. Or the Babylonian's diet was just that beans and water proved to be healthier. Now the Babylonians did not follow the Bible. They may have had steak tartare. They may have had blood in their feet. They may have been eating pork. Thus, Meltzer took away the portion of their meat. I bet you that ticked everybody off. So Daniel's already got enemies. And the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse, beans. Here's a nice thing of ribs oh, barbecue ribs no more well, where's our ribs our ribs are supposed to be here nope what's this bowl it's beans hey wasn't this what daniel shadrach meshach and Ugo were eating yeah i mean we gotta eat this this much because of them so you already know and these were it said your sort, your age group. Talk about peer pressure. Your young men, the young men like you. And then we read already some that were Jewish. 
There were more Jewish boys, young men in this group, besides Daniel, Meshach, and Bendigo. Where were they? You tell me they only called four Hebrew boys? And only four Hebrew boys stood up and said, we want to do right by God? And we're not even told how many were there. But four men of God who want to do right stood up properly, respectfully, politely, stood up and said, can we please not do this? Oh, you fear. Well, I understand your fear. I understand where you're coming from. Can we try to work this out together? For the good of you, for your life, and for the good of us, that we can serve our God. Now, I can tell you with the things I've, I've done with the street preaching. You can't be here. This is, well, okay. Well, see you later. We'll go, we'll go look at what the, the rules and laws are, and we'll find out. Oh, okay, that property, yeah, the best thing is maybe it is private property to an extent, but that sidewalk over there is public property, so we'll stay on the sidewalk, and you stay over there, and we're not going to, you know, you got your farmer's market, we've got our place to preach, we're <coughs> happy. You got your place, and I got my place. Okay? We did it with the battle with the school. You can't be here. Oh, boy. We can't be here. Well, we'll find a place where we can be. Okay? You got your place, and I got my place. I've got a church. I know a church, and a person that I know today. They went and had their street preaching. We're going to preach right here. Yes, we are. Uh, This is private property. I don't care. We have the right to be here. And you went in handcuffs. Yelling and screaming. Oh, I got the right. got the right. And you know what it found out in the long run? The law was right and you were wrong. And I'm sitting healthier and bright. Doing it God's way properly. You don't always have to go in there and bow it out and sword and all that. There's a compromise here that was right. This eunuch in charge had a proper understanding that if it didn't work out, his life was going. If it didn't work out for Daniel, his God would be angry with him. How do you come between the things? Daniel 1 teaches you. And as for these four children, that's it. Four children. Of all the entire king's seed of Judah. Four children. Four. That's it. The few, the minority of the minority are the ones that will stand for God. God gave them knowledge. Wait a minute. It said over here in verse 4, they had knowledge. God gave them more. They became wise men. The only one the Bible speaks more, more uh, wise, wisdom is Solomon. And skill and learning and wisdom. Verse 4 said that's what they already had. But these four children, outside of these other children, received more. How do you want to grow in God? You've got to stand out from the crowd, even out among the Christians, and do what God tells you to do to be blessed. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Ezekiel 28, 3. Daniel stepping out out of the four children. 
See, out of the whole group of Hebrew children, four stood out. Out of those four, Daniel stood up. Now at the end of the days that the king has said he should bring them in, and this is the three years of verse 5, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. So Daniel and all the children, or young men, three years older, the king commanded, communed with them, talked with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. What a promotion. And the rest of the book of Daniel, because of him standing out to do right by God and doing it properly, we are going to get all kinds of information. That is parallel to Ezekiel. That is parallel to the book of Revelation. We're going to know things only Daniel knew. And writing them down. And in all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king acquired of them. He came to them for wisdom. Unlike Pharaoh, he, who ran to his magicians. Nebuchadnezzar ran to wise men of God. And understand that the king inquired of them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were with, that were were uh, I can't say that were in all his realm. The magicians and astrologers are put aside, not with God's people. They're separate class. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. So Daniel goes through Nebuchadnezzar. He goes through Belshazzar. And he shows, and he's still there when Cyrus comes in and Babylon has fallen. That's a good long period of time. 